Dr. Roberto Cingolani. Here it is. Uh, uh, Dr. Cingolani um, currently is the scientific director of Istituto Italiano di Tecnologia, the Italian Institute of Technology. Uh, please uh, read uh, his whole uh, biography on the program as well as uh, the biographies uh, of all other panelists because they are so long and full of accomplishments and awards and everything that unfortunately we don't have time. So let's, uh, let's hear first uh, uh, about the Istituto Italiano, uh, yeah, which yeah. will be a Here's kind of a words. model, yeah. right, for the techno. Thank you. I guess. Um, look, I'm a physicist, okay? I grew up scientifically in Max Planck Institute in Stuttgart and I spent time in the United States, in Japan. I think I've seen different models. Uh, I had to go back to Italy for reasons were not scientific at all, were more unfortunately due to um, family tragedies. So somehow I always kept with me a revenge feeling <laughs> working in Italy. But I think I had a good opportunity to apply and develop a new model, which is very complementary to the, to the rest of the scientific model in the country. And I tend to consider the IIT as uh, an extra offer uh, to our young people uh, in a civilized country that we should have, should have academia, should have uh, different research entities, including a foundation, a Gesellschaft, for, for those of you who know the German term. Um, IIT uh, is essentially a, a very young institute. Um, I want to spend just a very few words to tell you what we did uh, in a few years, and then you possibly will understand why um, we, we were required to develop uh, something similar uh, in Milan for the Expo. Quickly, a foundation has three bodies, like a small holding. There is an um, executive committee, which would be the administration council, a board of trustees, and a scientific committee. I mean, honestly, these two bodies are just the, the bodies that run the infrastructure, but this is the body that runs the science. Uh, there are big names here. Most of those are in the United States, and they are supported by a standing committee of external experts that consists of approximately 200 scientists that essentially evaluate people and science. Basic requirements uh, um, are very simple. I mean, basic characteristics, you know, we, we have a small network, so it's just small uh, Max Planck or Fraunhofer network. If, if you want, the mission is at the border between uh, life science, uh, sorry, um, uh, basic science and applied science. I don't know why the, uh, now the, the well, the lettering is changing, it doesn't matter, mystery of, uh, of words. Uh, at the moment, we, we ran about uh, 45,000 square meters of laboratories, and there are a couple of outstations in the United States, too, in, in, in the Boston area. Uh, this is the headquarters in Genova that you're warmly invited to visit. It's, it's right now uh, one of the largest single uh, building laboratories in, uh, in the continent. We have a scientific plan which is based on three mainstream uh, program, the technology program that include uh, robotic rehabilitation, graphene, and portable energy sources. The core programs which are curiosity driven, so brain science, robotics, and material science and chemistry. And then the cross-disciplinary program that are high return, high risk programs, essentially human machine and machine machine interaction uh, technologies applies, applied to health primarily drug delivery by polymer construct, uh, paramagnetic particles, uh, single bio event detectors, and so on. Uh, advanced single uh, biomolecules imaging tools and computation. Um, so it is wide, but in a sense, a relatively well-defined uh, program. Uh, the budget of the Institute is approximately uh, 125 million every year, 96 from the state, the rest is extramural. Um, people, we were starting December 205, so it's, it's, a, it's a relatively young uh, story. We grew up this way. We are approximately 1,500 at the moment. Consider that over the, the first five, four years, we were building the infrastructure. So it was essentially what we call a canteen or working area. Um, right now, I think the important points are recruitment occurs exclusively through international calls. And we use uh, exclusive research uh, committees. So we don't have Gazzetta Ufficiale. We, we're not in the public function. Uh, this is quite an advantage. Um, our PIs are full autonomous. They get a budget for four years, and then they're evaluated ex post by international panels. So they have a budget. They are free to do what they want within the frame of the scientific committee of the scientific plan. We have a strong gender policy in place. Forty-one percent women at the moment. Eleven percent is an ultralight uh, administration. And so far, we created about 300 uh, new jobs, 370, um, partly due to the startups, partly due to extramural funds. I mean, if you want to see the picture of IIT, this is the pyramid. So these are the PIs, and these are the, the very young people. No one is permanent in the institute. 
the best you can get is, is a dirigente position like in a company so if you don't perform you go but salaries are much higher than, than the public this is the histogram of the age i'm 54 so i'm considerably uh increasing the the average but at the moment the average is around 33.5 and of course there's a big bunch of people here in the 29 28 which is actually the strength of the institute and this will ever will be ever the case because as i said no one is permanent so essentially this Gaussian does not shift well, actually, it's, it's a Maxwell Boltzmann uh, curve. It's not a Gaussian for physicists. We gather people from 57 countries. This is very unique. I mean, this demonstrates that the, demonstrate that the problem of the, the brain drain is, is not a problem. It's just a matter of rules, stupid rules. And of course, of offer package. So we get people from 57 countries. And we have, uh, I'm very sorry for the formatting. I mean, when I changed the computer, all the lettering, the, the format was changed. But anyway, you, you can read anyway. Um, and we get 21 scientific profiles, so there are 21 uh, PhD um, uh, kind of scientists in the, in, in the team. It's a very cross-disciplinary environment. There's no uh, disciplinary groups. You just have a project and you hire the knowledge you need. Um, okay, I don't want to be boring with numbers. Just let me tell you something. This is uh, uh, the Nature Index, uh, published in August 2016. And IIT was ranked among the top 25 rising stars among the new institutions that were created uh, less than 20 years ago. This was good for us. This is what we want. Concerning um, technology transfer, we created uh, 14 startups. And in the last two years, we were raising uh, about 60 million euro from, from private investors. Uh, the last one, this moment of technology has to do with the uh, um, this was created, incorporated last week, has to do with um, robotic rehabilitation. And the first round of funding uh, was raising 10 million cash from one single investor. Uh, this, of course, is, is connected to uh, a very strong uh, patent activity of the Institute. At the moment, the portfolio includes about 400 patents. All of them are uh, international. 20% uh, are licensed. And this is a very important value of the Institute. I mean, protecting IP is very important for um, the progress of the research. Another measure we're developing quite uh, intensively within the Institute is the creation of joint laboratories with companies. At the moment, we hold a joint laboratory with Nikon from Japan. This is a six million euro lab for five years with MOOC, the multinational, uh, multinational company, American company for uh, pneumatic actuation. It's a $3 million uh, lab with the, the insurance company called Inailis. This is an almost 20 million uh, grant for, for six years. Novacart is the main uh, packaging company, um, paper packaging company in the country. And very likely it will be used by other uh, big names. I'm waiting uh, Dr. Renzi from IBM to announce this later. Um, I'm also quite happy to say that we, we, we are quite aggressive with the ERC policy. At the moment, we have 14 ERC winner out of 65 uh, PIs, and whoever gets an ERC enter automatically in tenure track. Our PIs are all tenure track or tenured people, so there is a, a, an immediate entrance in the tenure track if you win an ERC. All right, so why the Technopol then? I think Prime Minister Renzi was visiting IIT at the beginning of 2014. He saw more or less this, this kind of environment. Essentially, I think the impact was to see many people, many colors, many religions, many languages, and of course, uh, a very young community. I think this is, was the only contact till October 2015. When we were contacted, we were required about an idea for, for, the, for the Expo era, for the post-Expo. I mean, and I want to stress this. This was the request of an idea. Okay, ideas are priceless. And when we were required to provide an idea, we said, okay, we have an idea. And we wrote an idea in two pages. And this was uh, 20 days before uh, the Technopol was closed. And the idea, I think, was good, was, was appreciated. There was a long discussion, and we were working with the universities of Milan, with many hospitals. Um, actually, we made 116, 116 meetings, scientific meetings, with colleagues and institutions in the Milan area. And on February 24, that means five months later, we delivered the program. Delivering is very important. Delivering on time is more important. This is actually something we really believe is very important in science. This was evaluated by a, a, a panel uh, consisting of uh, internationally acknowledged scientists, none of them working in Italy. The entire process was conducted by the Minister of Research. It lasted four and a half months. 
the delivery, the, um, referee, the valuation report was delivered uh, in July. This will be made very soon public together with the entire project. Just to make it clear, the project is not yet public simply because there are legal rules like Corte de Conti should approve the budget and blah, blah, blah. Once this is, will, will be made, it will be all published. If you go on the IIT webpage, however, you find a PowerPoint where there are the key points described, and I will show you quickly. Um, the evaluation was very positive. As usual for a master plan of this size, there were, or there were a number of comments, recommendations. We were receiving and implementing all the recommendations. We were working uh, the entire month of July, August, and beginning of September. Final version was then shared with the Minister of Research and with the Rectors of Milan. It was approved by the Rectors of Milan. 9 of September, the budget was approved by the Minister of Finance, and then this was officially delivered to the government. Actually, it was 11 months after uh, we were required an idea. The project is 1.4 billion in 10 years, and the structure is basically something that starts from an international benchmark. If you go through the, the map, you see that at the moment there are a number, I mean, these this dots represent large-scale infrastructures in which, you made, in which people develop genomics, big data, food technologies in the range, in the size of 100 millions every year, okay? This is a typical size. The smallers are not included. And of course, we, decide, we realized that really Italy was missing something. The benchmark is huge. This are the, I'm sure most of you know these things. You, you know England Genome um, Project, you know RECAN, you know Broad Institute. You know, you, you, I'm sure you know that the, the Crick Institute is now being launched in London. It's 100 million, 100 million uh, pounds and 1,500 people. So, I mean, the advanced countries are really rushing in this direction. Now, what is the idea? This is a touch of Italian flavor plus a lot of technology. Combining in the biological domain intrinsic and extrinsic factors that impact on life expectancy and, and diseases, uh, combining with the uh, advanced models in, in uh, computational life science, uh, data science, uh, and of course applying, applying these this predictive models to different domains, and of course a number of new technologies such as uh, single biomolecule um, detectors based on, on quantum systems, uh, new sensing systems, uh, packaging for food, new imaging. So all this is being translated into trying to respond to a number of questions. I like very much the way uh, the, uh, the Crick Institute is, is introduced in this webpage. We want to answer seven questions and a list of questions. So basically, this was something similar we did. First of all, we will work a lot on interplay among genetics, nutrition, and genomic basis of human diseases. We're going to develop new concepts of fast, cheap, disposable devices for sensing and diagnostics. We develop methods in artificial intelligence and statistics to extract knowledge from data, huge amount of data. Of course, the, the concept is strongly based on an Italian tradition, healthier and safer food, translated into a more scientific way, which is not simply the how good is the Mediterranean diet? Well, this we, we all know, but making this scientifically sound, it's a different story. Developing predictive algorithms and applying them to biology, drug discovery, health, and of course, uh, using some of this uh, predictive algorithm to massive amounts of available socioeconomic data. This is a requirement that the government made explicitly, and of course, we, we fulfilled. Now, which are the results of such an initiative? First of all, creation of a large-scale international research infrastructure, something that Italy needs desperately. IIT is the largest infrastructure in the country. Big countries are making large infrastructures. I mean, in hard sciences and in advanced life science, without infrastructure, you don't go far. It's finished the time where you, do, you get the Nobel uh, Prize with your little fume. This doesn't work anymore. Maybe in few cases, but not, definitely this is not the, not the majority of cases. Production, obviously, of new scientific knowledge. Development of predictive models. The first large-scale national screening for can cancer patients, neurodegeneration patients, healthy people. We plan 8,000 screening every year for the first three years, and this has to increase considerably over the next years. And then, of course, a massive recruitment of people. So let me show you what is the structure. Seven large-scale centers typically 200 people each, typically 15 to 20 million each in size. Oncogenomics, neurogenomics, nutrition and, and, and uh, nutrigenomics. 
a center dedicated to development of uh, algorithms based on uh, topological approach, machine learning, artificial intelligence. This is mathematics, basically. A center dedicated to computational life science, from 3D genomics to the development of the computer science needed for the uh, large-scale databases. A center dedicated to hardware sensing and nanotech technologies. And a, and a seventh center dedicated to application of predictive model to social domain. There will be three large-scale infrastructure. This will be national facilities, high-throughput genomic screening, a facility capable of 20,000 screen per year, a proteomic facility we call imaging because this essentially will be a cryo TM with with a single uh, molecule, uh, pr uh, single protein uh, structure capability, so ultra high resolution, and of course a large uh, a large uh, scale data uh, data storage system. It's going to be an exabyte storage capability at the Chineca supercomputer facility. This has to be national for everybody. It's a way to make science more democratic. It's a way to make a more uniform uh, genomic assessment of patients from Calabria to Lombardia. Of course, having Lombardia as the driver, as the train, because Expo was there, because in Lombardia there's a lot of know-how, there's a lot of hospitals. And there will be, of course, a, a, a galaxy of hospitals which will be involved, plus about 40 IRCs, I'm sure you know, these research uh, hospitals uh, in the country that will be involved uh, progressively. This is the hiring plan. As you see, number one is seven directors for seven centers. Even before this, there will be one chief scientist, sort of scientific manager, but the seven directors. And then the PIs, like the tenure, tenure track or tenure. These are the final number you see. There will be something like 100 PIs. These people are going to have budget, like in IIT, independence. There will be approximately 120, 130 researchers and technologies, more junior, and so on and so forth. So this is how the scientists will grow. This is how the administration will grow. This is how the PI will grow. And if you see that in seven years, this will be approximately 1,500 people, that means that uh, we can make a financial need plan, which is very clear. This will be the infrastructure investment. So people investment. These are the research costs associated to the headcount. So the infrastructure plus people plus research costs overall give the black, the black curve, which means that we will go steady state in a few years to approximately 1,500 people with approximately 140 millions. And, I, and I'm sure you note that uh, there is a full cost per capita, which is in the range of 90,000 euro per person. I challenge you, find somebody better than this. IIT at the moment is 80,000, but it's of, course, it, of course it started 80, uh, well 10 years ago. And this is very important. Research needs also standard cost. You're going to do this, give me the money and then we will see. No, no, you make a forecast. It's, it's business, it's paid with the public money. All right, next step. We will create this new entity. This will be created by the government. We're gonna start the logistics infrastructure in January, very likely. I'm just forecasting a little bit, but you know, I'm guessing. And then of course, recruitment will start immediately with, interna with the international calls. Top level people first, and then descending all the others. The logistics is shown here. We are now discussing with the expo area. There is this broad area where we identify the number of buildings that could be recovered. Of course, I mean, this has to be agreed with the master plan of Expo Area, but of course, we, we are discussing this since a long time, and there is already quite a safe idea. There is something available immediately in this area, so we are very confident that this will start in 2017. Okay, I want to thank you for the attention, and I think I, I leave the rest to the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much.